Majesty's ship, the aircraft carrier Implacable, sails into Vancouver Harbor. Aboard her are British and Canadian prisoners of war who have spent almost four years in Japanese camps. To some, the Vancouver skyline is familiar. To others, it is strange, but all are mighty happy to see it. To the Canucks, it means home. To the British lads, it is one more step on the way to Lancashire Town or Devon Field. As the gangplank is rolled out, a grand welcome is given the men who have endured untold hardships at enemy hands. Other ships are continually arriving at West Coast ports with Empire troops homeward bound. Instead of taking a long voyage through the Panama Canal to England, the sea trip of the Britishers is broken in Canada. Daily papers are as precious as food to the returning warriors. They have a lot of news on which to catch up. Juicy BC apples handed out by Red Cross girls are sure a treat after years on a rice diet. and Canadian Pacific trains take the British Tommies across the continent to the port of Halifax. Here, the Queen Elizabeth and other ships will take them safely to England. Stopping at various points on the eastward trip, they get their first view of the scenic beauty of the Dominion. So the Empire repatriation scheme functions to bring the Commonwealth back to its peacetime state. Members of the Women's Division, Royal Canadian Air Force, parade to Buckingham Palace. The occasion is a formal inspection by the Queen and Princess Elizabeth. The Queen expressed a desire to see the Canadian girls before they returned to Canada. Many of them, on draft for home, waited until the date of the inspection could be arranged. Now they are reviewed by Her Royal Highness. who did such a good job in releasing Cherubon airmen to keep them flying, march by on their last big ceremony. They will carry home the best wishes of Her Majesty, the Queen. Sponsored by the Air Cadet League of Canada, the Central Gliding School operates near Ottawa. A Kirby Cadet glider is assembled from a prefabricated kit in preparation for a flight. Graduates of the Construction Supervisors course preside at the assembly. When the construction is complete, the craft is towed onto the runway by a tractor. A short distance from the flying field are a number of ridges which provide the updrafts of air necessary to successful prolonged soaring flights. once used in England to wind in barrage balloons is one method used to launch the gliders. A plane also is utilized to get the motorless kites airborne. The purpose of the Central Gliding School is to train instructors. They, in turn, will assist in the development of gliding programs in their home provinces. So Johnny Canuck Jr. will soon have his flying dreams become reality thanks to the Air Cadet League of Canada. <music> Veterans of World War I greet General Creerar as he returns to his home in Hamilton, Ontario. 20,000 Hamiltonians give their fellow citizen a grand welcome as he inspects his guard of honor. At the City Hall, an official municipal ceremony takes place. 
While crowds cheer the man who led the first Canadian army to victory, the general is presented with an illuminated address of welcome by Hamilton's mayor, Sam Lawrence. Civic Stadium, General Querar chats with veterans of this war who were wounded on the Western Front. After touring all military establishments in Canada, the GOC will retire to Hamilton, having fulfilled a glorious military career. Just over a year after liberation, the Belgian town of Eclou plays host to its Canadian liberators. The Lincoln and Welland Regiment from southern Ontario parades to the cemetery at Adigem. In honor of their dead comrades, wreaths are placed on the cenotaph by Major Swayze, the acting O.C. For the three-day visit, the town of Eclou is in a holiday spirit. Manners leave no doubt in Canuck minds of the goodwill of Belgian citizens. Town Burgomaster Robert Stacer inspects the regiment prior to making the presentation of a banner in token of the liberation. In reciprocation for the honor bestowed on them, the O.C. Lincoln and Wellens presents the dignitary with a captured German sword suitably inscribed. Acts of international goodwill such as this will go a long way in future years to keep the world in fellowship and peace. It's kickoff time in the Big Four inaugural game between Toronto Argonauts and Ottawa Rough Riders. Playing on home ground at Lansdowne Park, the Capitol team shows great form in the first half. Ted Morris's latest double blue edition is completely outclassed and outplayed in the opening phase of the turning, but they stick right in there, trying. Trotting out all their bag of tricks, Ottawa works even the old line buck for yards, while their hometown supporters go wild. Tony Golab, ex-RCAF pilot, heads their list with some outstanding plays. Billy Myers does some great work for Argos, but the one-sided score still mounts up. You can never tell until the clock rings full time. In the last quarter, the Argos go wild. Filling the air with pigskin, they crash through from nowhere to snatch the game from the superior rough riders. The final score, Argos 11, Ottawa 9. At number eight Canadian repat depot, a Jim Canna horse show plays to standing room only. British troops of the Animal Transport Company, RASC, give a demonstration of wrestling on horseback. General Spry, the repat chief, enjoys the antics of the British muscle man who would make Stasiak and Strangler Lewis green with envy. And just like back home, the ladies are great followers of the grunt and groan game, and these mastodons are strictly mobile. It's over the fence and away in the open jumping competition. But some of these equines haven't read the rules. Ah, rocket propulsion is the answer. Just to add variety to the scene, a helicopter arrives for an exhibition. Just think, we'll be going to work in one of these things someday, lunch pail and all. With yoinks and tally-ho, the chitting-fold farmer's hunt appears. They don't hunt foxes, they hunt wolves. Yeah, can you blame them?
Rounding out the program, a Canuck team enters the list to play the game of musical chairs. It may be a parlor game back in Podunk Center, but the way these lads play it, there'll be a few troopers attending mess at the Stand Easy tonight. Yes, strictly for laughs is the Repat Oak Burners Jamboree, the Farnborough Horse Show.